What led you to become a filmmaker? What, is, you know, what, what, what was the particular path? I know you came from a filmmaking family, but apparently they didn't even let you watch films when you were growing up. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was uh, a management consultant, and I was so disillusioned with my job right. <laughs> that I decided to move into films <laughs> as a stopgap to see whether this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Actually, that was the first step, and uh, I didn't think when I was growing that I would look at this as a career. It was a passion to something which I liked, yep. which I enjoyed, which I understood a little more than the guy who was sitting next to me in the theatre, mm -hmm. in the screen, and that's all it was. And, uh, but then you looked at it as an option as to see, you know, if you want to take a chance, you have to do it when you're 22, 23, I thought. It gets more difficult as we difficult, get older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's when I thought I'd see whether I have a flair for it. Okay. And um, took some time off and tried to get into it. This, this might seem like a, an odd question because whenever people talk about cinema, they always talk about the art. But in a way, I suspect that there are some things from your background as a management consultant that have been quite useful in terms of, film, of filmmaking. Oh, it was absolutely wonderful, you know, in the sense when I did my first film and I got a break finally, and, it took me quite a while, yeah. about two years or so, to struggle and convince people that to put money into a film and <laughs> to trust me to direct it. And I uh, went into the film, all set to do a film, with all the management techniques that I knew. And uh, four weeks down the line, I had thrown and torn apart every bit of... <laughs> the script was intact, but all the management schedule <laughs> and the poor charts went all over the place. Because I think you understand that in cinema, you know, you kind of uh, reinvent what is written on paper. Mm -hmm. It is not a, it is, it is not a, a duplication. It is not a conversion in a direct sense. Yeah. It is actually reinventing it. You have using a completely different language. There are too many variables, mm -hmm. so it is not so easily, you know, um, applicable. You can't take technique and apply. But I think the sense of what any education gives you is a sense of reasoning mm -hmm. and um, a logical approach to things. I think management does that quite a bit. And uh, in a strange way, it helps me a lot when I write scripts. Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's an answer. Because I, I had imagined that you would, you would say how it might help you in terms of knowing how to deal with crew or with managing <laughs> actors or something. How, would, how does it help you writing scripts? Yeah, uh, I think it gives you... The sense that you're constantly, in the early stages when you start to write a script, you constantly step back and say, where am I going? Right. What is my goal? Where is my trying to reach? What is my story? Okay. And then you take the broader view all the time. Right. And then see whether I'm reaching that and, uh, you know, approach the problem as, you know, not just one way, but look at it and see what are the other options. And, you know, I mean, look at it a little more logically and not just emotionally. Okay, that's very interesting. Look at options, look at, and constantly step back. Right. To be, you know, disassociated with it, come back and look at it clinically. Even when you make the film, you know, after you've done the script, when you make the film, you get too involved that you see only pixels. <laughs> you know, you don't yeah. see the picture. Yeah. So you sometimes have to come back and see whether, you know, what you originally started with, you know, that, that is still there. You right. know, whatever drove you, the, the code that drove you, is it still retained or is it lost in all the details? You, you said something interesting just now about um, the, the way that a script is a, is a blueprint, but you have to kind of bring it to life, if yeah. you like. Are you very precious about the material that you've written or are you quite happy to rip it up and chase a completely different idea when you're when, when you're actually there on the set, as we all know, time is money, the clock yeah, is ticking, yeah, uh -huh. you've got to finish a certain number of scenes yeah. during the day, but a scene isn't quite working. Yeah. How, how, do, how, how, how do you deal with yeah. that? <laughs> you struggle, you find to try to put the blame on somebody else. <laughs> 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 it's the biggest problem, you know. <laughs> <coughs> when you, you know, in India, when we play tennis, mm. you know, we have ball boys there. You know, and invariably the only time you get angry at the ball boy is when you hit a bad shot. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in it's the same case, you know. So 
it is tough it is tough when you know scene is written mm. in a room in a table you know in a yeah. computer yeah and you come there and you put people there and you have light you have the camera mm -hmm. you know you have the entire ambience is set and there people the actors yeah. who are there who are delivering and if it's not working then you have to come up with something fast and everybody is watching you yeah. and uh, you know you have to pretend you know everything and still come uh, up with that, something that that's the thing that i find that i find the hardest is when when you realize it's going wrong and everyone on the set realizes it's going wrong and at that moment they all look at you and yeah. you're, and, and, <laughs> and the clock is ticking and you have to come up with some kind of solution yeah, and you yeah. can't if you're in the edit suite yeah then it's fine. Yeah. You say stop. You go and you get a yeah. cup of tea or a cup of chai, whatever. But when you're on the set, you can't. Um, yeah, you, yeah. you can't stop at it's, all. It's a, it's let's a, let's have a look at our first clip. Um, they, these are mostly in in chronological order. So I wanted to take you back. It's a very short clip, 37 seconds. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation because I'm just a stupid English person. Um, so you can correct me if you want. This is a, a clip from your 1986 film Mona Ragam. Mona Ragam. Okay, yeah. there we go. Mona Ragam. So if you can roll the first clip, please. As I told you, some of these clips, some of these clips end quite suddenly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so how, how do you feel when you watch? I, I have a great problem watching anything that, that I've ever made because the moment I finish it, it's like onwards. Yeah. How do you feel? I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Most, what, what, why is that? I mean, I think I understand why that is, but maybe you can tell these people why, why it is. <laughs> uh, when you watch a film, you can watch for this length. It's all right. But beyond that, all you see is only mistakes. In it. No, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And the other thing, don't you find, is that because you've sat in the cutting room and you've seen it yeah. 100, 200, 300 yeah, times, times, that any joy has just disappeared gone, from it. Gone out of it. Yeah. Um, and you're glad that it's out of your life and you don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> and also, it becomes other people's property. Yeah. Yeah, because we make it for other people, really, at the yeah. end of the day. And, so. and the other people have a lot of opinions. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they do indeed. Um, one thing I think is that, that's interesting for me, coming from a different filmmaking tradition to to you is that you not only have to deal with the elements of let's say um, social realism um, actors dialogue and the rest of it but but with this kind of the song and dance thing yeah um, and so which draws <coughs> on a completely different skill set it's not about psychology yeah it's a it's about display and it's about choreography and it's qu and in some ways quite mechanical but full of the joy of life how yeah. how on earth do you do that yeah I, actually I think uh, you know once you accept it as a part of your film, yeah. then it's a very liberating uh, process. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, it does something which I think uh, was very unique to an Indian film. Yeah. And in in the flow of a film, this kind of kind of uh, lets you reach an arc of celebration mm -hmm. of uh, you know of whichever way, whether it is um, whether it's joy or whether it is the moroseness of a sorrow, mm -hmm. or whichever emotion you have to, this will let you travel that in a very abstract fashion. You're not bound by logic. Right. You're not bound by, you know, literary movement. It just gives you an abstraction, yeah. which lets you fly and land back at a completely different point okay. and get across what is inside a person's mind in a different fashion. I think it's a very liberating thing. So, so it's like liberating the subtext in a way. Yeah, yeah, I think it is in the sense that it it comes out of actually of the oral tradition in India. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, in over the years, we've always had this tradition of telling stories, you know, uh, across not written but orally, and uh, all the epics have come through like that. Yeah, and they've all come through with you know with text and with music in between, with mm -hmm. phrases, with verses in between, and when you grow up as a child, you listen to it with a man telling you this great epic of Mahabharat, mm -hmm. and in between he breaks into a song, right? And he tells you, and that gives you, you know, the pause to take in a situation, take in where we have reached, and lands you into the next thing. So it's kind of if it is used very well, I think it's a tremendous tool. I'm I'm really sad that you guys don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> so much. <am I. laughs> That's. There's, there's, there's two things, two, um, two follow-on questions I want to, to ask about that because it, uh, when I was uh, you know, doing some um, research for, for our conversation, um, this is a quote I came across. Um, 
sometimes quotes from the internet are completely wrong. So I'm just I'm going to put this quote to you, yeah. and you can tell me whether you th- had some truth in it or is it just bullshit. That's the technical term, bullshit. <laughs> um, I admire how Manny Ratnam delves into Hindu mythology and creates contemporary renderings of it so that Roja is actually the story of Savitri and Satyavan retold and that the relationship of the brothers in Dalapati is in fact drawn from the story of Karna and Arjuna. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay, come on, not you can do better than just yeah. say yes. <laughs> Except, I'm not accepting any yes or no answers today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Expand a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, you know, to pick something that you've grown up with, which has been written years and years and years back, yeah. and find it relevant today, mm-hmm. in today's world, in today's context, that it is happening in front of you, and it is still, the emotion is still the same. Yeah. Whatever was there, if it is you know, just pl- replanted into this situation, mm-hmm. you still get the same emotion, you know I mean? So, so somewhere classics are made out of that. Yeah. You know, something that lives time, that gets through this. So it is true, it is true that Roja's base is really from, uh, I mean, from an old, you know, classical story of a, of a woman, of a wife, right. fighting with the god of death for her husband's life. You know, okay. I mean, it is a fantastic story, but, you know, she won't let the... No, the Lord, God of Death, take her husband away. And you know? when you work with this material, do you find the story and then it reminds you of something from these epics, or do you start yeah. with the epic and you then know. try and find something contemporary? No, it works both ways. I think in terms of Roja, yeah, it was the other way. It is what is happening around us, yeah, and the fact that it kind of resembled of something which I've known all along. Right. You know, it it touched the same chord. Yep. You know, it's completely different. You're dealing with something else that is contemporary, but the emotionally it is a, it's very similar. So it was, uh, whereas when you take the other film, Thalapati, for example, mm-hmm. that is based out of uh, two characters out of Mahabharata. Yeah. And uh, that came from the Mahabharata, that started with the Mahabharata and okay. then it became a contemporary. It's a, I think it's, a, it's something that is very strong. I mean, obviously, it's the case in um, Indian culture, but in Western culture, it happens maybe a bit more than people realize. So, for example, Star Wars. Mm. I think one of the reasons it has been so successful um, with audiences, it's, um, the work is very much based on Joseph Campbell, Hero with a Thousand Faces, which is to do with analyzing mythology and finding a way. So I actually think it's a, there's, a, there's very few stories, yeah. in a way, as you know. <laughs> and, and this is a way of reaching back into something that, that has been around for a very long time and has a kind of strong yeah. cultural resonance. Let me ask you a more practical um, question about what, a, a sequence like this. How do you put it together? You have dancers, you have a choreographer. Yeah. How much is planning in advance? How much on the day? How much do you storyboard? Well, the, just some of the nuts and bolts. Uh, okay, I'll go the reverse. The storyboard is zero. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Zero. It just uh, we choreograph it right. before, yeah. you know. Um, but when you say before, during rehearsals or on the yeah, day? Yeah, not on the day. Before, no. when the music has come, yeah. and we're ready for the song. Mm-hmm. We get it uh, composed. Yeah, and uh, we get the actors to train. Yeah. for that song. Yeah, so we take a few days off in that in that they get set, and then we go and shoot. Right. And we have a deadline, and <laughs> and these are regional films where we cannot afford to, you know, stretch right. at all. Right. So we have to do it really fast. So a sequence like this would take would would be how long? This this is a maybe a four minute song. It would have taken us two and a half days. Really, is that all? Yeah. So you're really working, working, working very quickly. Yeah. Okay. And how long are you allowed? Because there's all kinds of union rules in the UK in terms of how long you can keep. I mean, how long can you work these guys for? How, how, long, how, long, is a, how, long, how long is a shooting day? I suspect that the, the regulations are slightly looser. Yeah, yeah, it is looser. <laughs> you just got to pay, that's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so your day starts when the sun comes up and it stops when the sun comes down, goes down. Yeah, right. mostly, but sometimes we <laughs> stretch into the night okay. and we do the night work. All right. <laughs> Very good. Um, I think time for our next clip. Um, and this is Nayakan? Nayakan. Okay, which is a film from 1987. If we can have the second clip, please. Amaz- I, I, one of the things I love about this, this scene is the restraint, the way that you're just, you're looking at the faces of those actors 
and you hold and you hold and you hold. We know what is there, but you only really reveal in a, a wonderful kind of operatic moment when you cut to that, that top shot. Yeah. So that's, you know, as a filmmaker, I, I, I applaud the, the technique in that. Um, I, it's a marvelous film. I had read, again, to go, who knows whether this is true, that this is, I mean, people have mentioned The, the Godfather with relation to this. Were you influenced at all? I mean, what, in, in terms of, I'm interested to know how much Western cinema has influenced you or, or whether your influences are primarily Indian? No, I think uh, the entire world cinema influences you. Whatever you've seen, whatever you've read, mm -hmm. <coughs> everything becomes a part of you. you, know, you know. So uh, I have a lot of influences uh, distinctly. And yeah, definitely Godfather was, you know, um, a huge influence. And so is Kurosawa. Sometimes when I see that shot, when it's coming, it just reminds me of. Uh, okay, there's one. Yeah, there's one more later. One of the clips later on, which yeah. is uh, I was going <laughs> to ask you specifically about Kurosawa. I can really yeah, see that yeah, in yeah. your in in your work, and I think, yeah. um, uh, you know, if you're going to if you're going to be influenced, be influenced by the greats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the there's an intensity to the performance here, though, that I find very very strong, and for. For Western audiences, often we find, let's say, Bollywood films. Yeah. Very broad in the acting style, okay? Um, which can work, and they're, and they're a marvelous, entertaining films, but this has a kind of psychological acuity that I don't see every day in, in Indian cinema. Um, and how do you work with actors? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, I, I want to know what I can steal yeah, from yeah. you. <laughs> no, I think uh, the first thing you said when uh, after this clip yeah makes me confess something that uh, this is early stages of my career you know mm -hmm. and uh, you know when you making a film you're trying somehow to make the scene alive to bring it to life yeah and um, so you tend to try to do it a little bit of the camera with a little bit of the moment you mm -hmm. know, go down and drag it along and you know do all sorts of things just to make it alive yeah just to keep that energy up yeah and that is what i was trying to do for this particular scene mm -hmm. and actually the shot that we saw later yeah which is up that is where i had first placed the thing because i thought dramatic right and then i saw the rehearsal okay. and i saw an actor and i realized all i have to do is just be there and look at him that's okay. all okay you know so when you when you, you know, have an actor who can deliver. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to be an eye. That's all. You just have to be there to capture. Yeah. Do nothing else. Just follow him where he goes and get the people correct, at ambience correct. But I think it takes a good director to realize that rather than just come in and have an idea in your head, yeah. to be able to change direction on the day, yeah, I think yeah. is the definition of a good director. Yeah. There are many people who are technically skilled, but that X factor is being able to really see what's happening on the set and try and get the, yeah. the best from it. Do you rehearse much in advance of shooting? Do you no, enjoy the no, rehearsal process? No, I do the, uh, we do a little bit of reading these days. I don't rehearse too much. Right. I feel a certain amount of spontaneity goes away. Yeah. I feel it's not just the, the actor's spontaneity, I think it's my spontaneity that goes away. Yeah. I think if I do all the correction here, I won't have anything left at the spot. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I, we, we do, so that what I really want in those sessions is that if any line that doesn't sound right, mm -hmm. doesn't sit right, if anybody feels that the character is not consistent, you know, those things to come up. Yeah. And then we get that, those things fixed. Right. And um, then we play it more on the, we do the rehearsals there just before the shot. Okay. And in terms of, because where things can go wrong with actors, of course, is if you have one point of view of their performance. Because as a director, you, you're you directing the story, not yeah, just the actor. Yeah, you're trying yeah, to understand. Yeah. And they don't necessarily, yeah. they may be very good, but they don't necessarily understand the, the bigger picture. Yeah. How do you deal with those conflicts? Yeah. You just have to sometimes tell them. <laughs> <laughs> because it can be very seductive, and especially if the actor is good. Yeah. And if he does something, mm. and it's, it's magical. So yeah. you can get, you can fall for it very easily if you... You sometimes have to realize that's not my story. That's where the music is coming. I just want him to be silent. Right. The camera is moving. I don't want him to move. Yeah. Okay. There are other elements which are telling the story. So, if the actor is intelligent, it's very easy for him to understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, who understands the other elements of the thing. Otherwise, you just have to be a bit more firmer. Right. 
and turn away before he answers. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good technique. Um, one one thing, as I think I, I told you when we were outside, how. Um, a number of people, when I put up on Facebook that I was interviewing you, a number of people wrote to me, um, and... I fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I know this isn't true. And so, um, and one of them in particular wanted, and this was from, from a young actress who's called Anna Kampahash, who lives in, in Delhi, um, and she wanted to know, in particular, how do you handle child actors? Because she, she was very, very affected by... Um, a movie you made, Anjali, Anjali. okay, and Anjali, and and she finds it really hard to understand how you can get those kind of performances out of kids. Yeah, yeah. So what can I tell her? Uh, <laughs> I think with kids it's very simple. Either they're very good yeah. or they're not good. Okay, you know, <laughs> there's no in between, no necessity for you to sit and talk and get them into mood. Nothing. Right. It's either they're natural mm -hmm. that they will be themselves when they're angry, when they're sad, when they're you know joyful, whichever way. Yeah. So if you're lucky to find good actors, good mm -hmm. child actors, mm -hmm. then it's a bliss to work with. They okay. really, really, I mean, sometimes I use them as an excuse when somebody, you know, in the same film, Anjali, yeah. there was, um, you know, we had restricted by time, we are shooting in a hurry, there are lots of kids, and, yeah. you know, getting late into the night and lighting is taking a long time. Yeah. And then this actor comes and tells me, you know, I have this issue, uh, I was thinking, so I had to tell him, mate, there's a kid sitting there, okay, <laughs> next to your position, the kid is not asking any questions, he's just doing it, uh, okay, <laughs> okay, so you go there and do that, <laughs> that's the only way I could finish the shoot that day. <laughs> that's very good, um, let's move on to the next clip, um, which is, all right, you have to excuse my, which is, Agni Nat Natchatiram. Yeah, okay. got it, bang All on. All right, very good. <laughs> <laughs> the next clip, please. That's okay. pink. Thanks. Beautiful lighting, great, great use of, of, of architecture. Is there, for, for someone ignorant like me, is there a big difference between, let's say, the industry in southern India, the Tamil industry, and, and Bollywood? What would, what, what would you say to, to a, a naive question like that? Probably the audience already know the, knows the answer, but I'm, inter <laughs> I'm interested to know the difference I, I, between uh, the two. And any stylistic differences in terms of this kind of sequence? Bollywood has more money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have less of money. <laughs> right. So we have to go stylish right. to make sure that we make up. Uh, I think this is one of the earlier films. Yes. So. I think it's very West Side Story-ish right. in terms of style, in terms of these long shadows and yeah. you know, those yeah. kind of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, but it, it still has incredible energy, though, yeah. you know, I think. I think it's, it, it's an urban film and about two young guys. And it, at, that time, at that point of time, we didn't have filmmakers in Tamil mm -hmm. who were basically from, from the city yeah. and making city films. Yeah. So we just didn't have that color till this kind of thing came. Right. You know, so it kind of, um, it means that the whole field was free for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, which can be a very useful thing. Yeah. Um, but you've made films in Tamil and in, in Hindi. Right. How is it working in, I mean, I don't know, maybe you're as fluent in Hindi as you are, as you are in Tamil. Is it, is it tricky making that transition? Oh, I hardly know a Hindi. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I barely manage. I, I don't. Right. So, so how can you make a film in a language yeah, you barely... I, I struggle. In the sense, I, you know, it's a strange thing. Most of it, your script and your dialogues, you kind of, you know, understand and know. Yeah. And um, so when you write it in Tamil, and then you work with a writer in Hindi, mm -hmm. and together we kind of rework it okay. to make it sure, make sure that it sounds genuine in Hindi. Mm -hmm. And then you do something which I don't so easily do in Tamil. You trust the actors more. Okay. <laughs> See, yeah, after that, if it, because I always felt that the words are not sacrosanct. Mm -hmm. No, I mean it is not every word. It's how the actor says it, yep. and whether it looks genuine, sounds genuine, feels good for them. It's what makes a difference. So in Hindi, because I cannot control the nuances of the expression of uh, words, yeah. so I trust them. I ask them whether they, they felt right, whether it was okay, you know? I mean, so 
I give that extra and put that little bit of more responsibility into their hands. Okay. Do you have a preference? I mean, do you prefer working in Tamil? Too, of course. Too? Right. It's so much easier, so much control you have. Right. <laughs> Very good. Okay, let's move on then to the next clip. This one I can pronounce. Bom okay. Bombay. Oh! <laughs> 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 Maybe I should say Mumbai. Okay, can we have the next <laughs> clip, please? So the film is called Bombay. How many days did you actually shoot in Bombay? <laughs> Three days. <laughs> <laughs> so so he, he told me this beforehand backstage. I thought that was that, that's one of the marvelous things about the the, the job that we do. Yeah. Is the, the is the smoke and mirrors. So explain to me why. You spent so little time. I mean, how long was the how long was the schedule for this film? Maybe sixty-five days. Okay, days. so you literally you, you shot for sixty-two days. Yeah. Where in Chennai? In Chennai. Okay, all right. And why why was that? Can you explain to the audience? It just made more economic sense. Mm -hmm. It was uh, everything was under control. Yeah. And it would have been uh, much more expensive for our. We are based in Chennai for mm -hmm. the entire unit to shift there, and work there would have been a lot more expensive. And shooting in Bombay is invariably a lot slower, right? And a lot more tedious. Okay. So. And you can't sleep in your own bed at night. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, a obviously, it's a, in terms of the subject matter, you know, the, the um, relationships between the Muslim and the Hindu communities, something that, be that if anything, is even more relevant today yeah. than, than than when it came out. Um, but but tricky subject matter, nonetheless. Is it? I really didn't think then that it was tricky. I still don't think it is tricky, in the sense, it's what's happening yeah. in India. So what is why can't films talk about it? Mm -hmm. There's no, I mean. But but you but you received some personal threats, didn't you, as a result of this? Yeah, I mean, you, um, the film is a cry against that. Right. So if you stop doing that, then where does it go? Mm -hmm. So, so I think I think it's I think should have more which reflect the broader audience, you know, the general people, mm -hmm. and uh, how we live life there, yep. you know, with so many cultures and so many religions together you know, on film. How, how did that work for you, though? Did you wake up one morning and think, I'm going to make a film about a political subject that might be quite controversial? Or do you start with a human story? Where, you know, how, yeah. how so does this come about? Actually, in a strange way, it happened uh, and I was doing the background score for my previous film before this. Yeah. And I was at uh, Rahman's, A.R. Rahman's studio, mm -hmm. doing the music. Mm -hmm. And Bombay was the most cosmopolitan city in India. Yeah. And uh, so it kind of shakes you up a bit to have a riot that takes place there. Mm -hmm. Now you feel that if it can happen in Bombay, it can happen anywhere in India. Yeah. You know, and that is not a very that's not a very nice thing to mm -hmm. you know, think of. And so you feel that's what, I mean, the first person whom I told that thing was across the mixer was to demand that we should do something. We should. Not that I had an idea of how to do it, whether right. I would ever be able to do it. You know, and I started off uh, thinking of it as a kind of a offbeat film in, in Malayalam yeah. with only two kids. Okay. Only one kid lost in the riot, you know, and then it kind of grew. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, that led on, I mean, this is one of, I think, three films that deal with, deal with, with, with this kind of issue. I mean, yeah. is it that you found it particularly, um, I mean, what, what, having explored it in one film and explored it very successfully, what pushed you to, to carry on with this issue? No, I think it was also two things. I think the, your age, Yeah. at that point of time, those are the things that affect you the most. Mm -hmm. You're aware of everything that's happening around and somewhere that starts reflecting, yeah. you know, and you're not worried about long shadows and, you know, <laughs> dancing in urban city alone. Right. There's something else that bothers you and you think that you can address it in, in the mainstream format. Mm -hmm. I think uh, to the advantage of, you know, taking something serious and reaching it across on a mainstream format mm -hmm. is that, you know, it gets communicated with a lot of people who, you know, which I think is relevant there in India. At that point of time, I just felt, because the predominant number of people felt similarly. Right. And it was not getting voiced. Mm -hmm. so, so we thought that this could be a possibility. And uh, it's interesting you're talking about mainstream cinema but doing something quite serious. Do you think it's possible then to both entertain and inform and educate at the same time. 
Yeah, I think so. I think, I think it's possible to entertain, mm. and it's possible to be sensible mm -hmm. while you're entertaining. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, so the balance is what you know really counts. I think that's what you struggle with sometimes. It works sometimes. It doesn't. Right. Are you when you're writing? Are you thinking about the audience, or you just think about making yourself happy? <laughs> Pretend good, they're not here. Good question. <laughs> good question. You can never ignore audience. You can never ignore yourself. <laughs> okay, so uh, the base should, you know, appeal to you. Otherwise, you will not touch that. Yeah. The thought, the core should work for you. Mm -hmm. And I come from this uh, concept that I am basically the audience. I've okay. been there too long. I've sat there in so many films yeah. with them, there along with them, and I know what works, what doesn't work. Okay. I've disliked so many films in my life <laughs> <laughs> sitting there. So I feel that I'm a part of them. Right. So I know that there are some things that will not you know, reach or work, mm -hmm. but that was then. And now I feel that these are the things that I want to make. So I you know, try to hit a balance between the two. Okay, great. Let's play the next one then. Um, which There's is just one. Yes. This cinematographer of uh, Bombay. Yeah. Rajiv Menon. Mm -hmm. He's here somewhere. Rajiv. Oh. Uh, uh, it, was, it was just fabulous work that he has done. Rajiv, I'm not responsible for this transfer. <laughs> 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 Very good. Um, and so the next one we're going to show with the clips about a minute long is Dilse. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. This, there's an incredible amount of vigor in that camera work and stylization. And if you look, if I, I've been shown that, um, that I wouldn't necessarily know that's the same filmmaker who made the first clip that, that we saw. It feels, because it feels very on the button and very contemporary and like someone who has watched a lot of contemporary American cinema and MTV and, and everything. So yeah. how do you keep yourself plugged in and stop yourself <laughs> turning into an old <laughs> fart? <I think. laughs> Pardon my French. <laughs> I think that's what I meant by that you guys are missing when you don't do songs. <laughs> when you have to do music in your film, yeah. out, outside the the drama that you narrate, uh -huh. then you have to find ways for each one right. to come up with a concept that, because that is like a mini film. Yeah. It has to have one story within that. Mm -hmm. It has to have an arc, it mm -hmm. has to finish, and it has to have a certain style. Right. So, and it can't be something you've done before. Yeah. And, you know, and you use it to your advantage. So <laughs> it gets you the chance of being some somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Working with, um, a cinematographer, have you? So, one, one of your esteemed collaborators is here. Have you worked with a number of different cameramen throughout your career? Do you, yeah. or do you tend to stick with the same people? Uh, three or four people. We have an amazing number of uh, good cinematographers. I think they're all really world class. Right. So, we've been lucky. I've been lucky that I've uh, worked with some really top class people. It takes half my burden away. Yes. Well, exactly. That's the thing. This is what Robert Altman said. The big trick is just to, to hire very good people. <laughs> and then, then the rest of it. So, um, uh, as we, well, I think I told you beforehand, I'm preparing a, a film myself to shoot in Mumbai, um, hopefully in the early part of next year. What advice would, thank you, <laughs> what, what, what advice would you give me as a foreign director of dipping my toe in the, in the well, with an entirely Indian cast? Um, uh -huh. of about 50% um, English language, 50% Hindi. So we'll we'll see. I'm sure your understanding of Hindi is much better than mine. <laughs> so do you have do you have any advice for a foreigner coming in shooting in Mumbai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please come. <laughs> 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 no, it'll be wonderful because the uh, the perspective will be different. Mm -hmm. And only be prepared. Be, be prepared, prepared for what? Be prepared for the unexpected. <laughs> 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 Don't come with one. Plan A alone. Okay. <laughs> Plan A, B, C, D, E, F. <laughs> Preferably something doesn't go wrong. Okay, turn around and do something else. Right. So you think? So you think maybe one needs to be more flexible working in India than yeah, you do. Yeah. And nothing else. should panic you. Okay. Nothing should worry. <laughs> Don't get be on a Zen mode. Okay. <laughs> How do you manage to do that? Because this, this is something I think is very important, um, and it's something I, I say to students when I'm when I'm teaching them. 
It's very easy when, for any of you here, if you're sitting at home and you're watching something or you're sitting in the cinema, it's very easy to go, that performance isn't very good, yeah. this shot's not very good, this doesn't really work. But there's something about being on the set when you're directing with all these different pressures yeah. that make, actually makes it much more difficult when you're watching the monitor yeah. to spot these things yeah. because you need to move on quickly yeah. because you yeah. know the weather, bad weather is coming or you've had yeah. a problem with this yeah. actor. Yeah. How do you keep calm in that situation? How do you keep focused? Yeah. It's difficult, but sometimes you have to draw a line, you know, it's your budget, it's your time, it's your this one. Mm. You, you have to say, this is my capacity, this is all I'm capable of getting out of this person. Right. <laughs> Either I kill him, <laughs> <laughs> or I accept this and move on. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, okay, well, this is the only one so far. I think this, this next clip is... Um, is, is this out of sequence? Most of them have been in, in sequence. This next one is Guru. Um, so if we could have the next clip. I, I think it's very interesting the way it's a kind of, you know, you've got that wonderful um, kind of slow, it felt like, a, I don't know whether, it was, whether they had a small crane on the, mm -hmm. what did you have on the train? Rajiv, there? what did we have? <laughs> <laughs> we had 15 minutes that much. Did you? <laughs> okay. But, it, but it's interesting because it kind of feels quite, Grand and epic, but the emotion is, yeah. is you know, it's the emotion really that, that, that gets you and touches you. I think that's a wonderful yeah. thing to be able to do. Because sometimes when you go very grand, it can, you can lose the human side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's true. Because I think uh, it, we are seeing it totally out of sequence. So, mm -hmm. uh, but the, it's, a, it's a reluctant marriage. Right. And that is where she has accepted him. Okay. And she, at the last minute, she's decided to come on with him right and it is her acceptance that that shot that slow shot that okay. goes towards all right her. i see i accept so it is that's interesting then because the, the very first clip we showed is also about i mean um which was mona ragam uh, is also a similar story it's a story about a woman who slowly learns to yeah, accept yeah, from yeah. from from a, an arranged marriage yeah. what is it about this particular tale that you know like that was 20 years previously that you that, that you made that film in India, 90% of the marriage is arranged. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a, so it's constantly there in the culture? It's there it's constantly, camera. and it happens every time. You okay. know, you're amazed at it, and it works. So it's, right. it's every time it's magical, you know, that it can actually happen and work right. and survive. Can I ask a personal question? Yeah. So I met your lovely wife backstage. Yeah. Is, your, is yours an arranged yeah. marriage? Yeah. Okay, all right. Is it working? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say it right? <laughs> Well, I, I can attest that this is true because I saw how they were backstage together. Um, all right, we're going to be coming on very soon. I'm going to have to move on to, to questions. Um, I think I'll just show one more clip, actually, which is from... Um, this is going back in time a little bit. It's to a film, Iruva. Yeah. Um, and this was the, the, the one... When I saw this, I thought, oh, this is a man who watches Kurosawa. Yeah. There's, a, yeah. there's a confidence ab about... Well, let's have the clip first, and we'll talk about it. If we can play the next clip, please. There's, there's a, a, a fant you really know how to tell stories with pictures. That's the thing that I find so impressive with that. There's a, you know, that the movement of the people when they, as they rush into frame, as a camera just comes over the top, tells you so much. Um, and the little jib that you do yeah. over the top there, and it's. I, so I just wanted to ask, in terms of this particular shot, I don't know if you remember the day that you yeah, did it. Did. did you have this idea in your head, or were you responding to what was there in front of you? No, I think the last bit of the hand getting and the grain coming up yeah. was only done there. Right. But I think uh, the basic idea of being the terrace and people being down, yeah. you know, that was there even when we were writing. Right. So to an extent it was assumed. I mean, that storytelling was really that. Right. He comes up, the, you know, and then s realizes that the entire neighborhood, he's come to his friend's house. Yeah. He's an actor, yeah, and uh, he's become a star. Mm -hmm. And suddenly he realized so many people are following <laughs> him. So it was his realization of his own popularity. Right. So the story was telling those shots. Okay. Well, it really, I mean, it's, it's a very, very impactful in the, in the way that Kurosawa uses movement as well. I think that kind of use of movement is always, for me, a, a sign of yeah. what separates the sheep from the goats yeah. in, in, in terms of directing. Um, there's a lot of extras in that scene. Yeah. And is... Uh, are Indian extras good? 
<laughs> because I've had some of the most difficult days I've had on set. Hasn't been with main actors, and I've worked with some quite tricky actors, as I'm sure you have. It's always with the extras or with the, with the day players or something seem to call, cause more problem. Oh, you've seen nothing. You come to January. <laughs> <laughs> you come to India in January, <laughs> and then we'll talk. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Um, listen, we'll just have one final um, clip here. This is just to kind of bring us um, up to, to date. Not your most recent film, but a recent film, Ravan from 2010. Oh, well, yeah. um, so um, then we'll have a, a few words about that, and then we'll finally open it out to the audience for questions. So the final clip, please. Mar marvelously lyrical. Is there anything you can tell us about the, the, the shooting of that? It looks like it was probably a bit... You know, it's very lyrical and very poetic, um, but it must have been a struggle to shoot, no? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it was a difficult location to do and uh, you know, had to be suspended and mm -hmm. the tree won't stand in place. <laughs> and the last shot is still very grainy. I'm still upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I understand what you mean, but sometimes I... I think when you give a film over to an audience, if they're involved, yeah. you're worrying about the yeah, grain. Yeah, no one yeah, else is worrying no about the grain. <laughs> did you, I mean, was it wire work involved? Did you remove wires digitally or, or not in yeah, terms yeah, of doing yeah. that stunt? And, yeah, right. digitally it was removed. Okay, all right then. Don't want to give too many of your secrets away. <laughs> um, no, that, like he said, you know, we, uh, I think to have a good team, you know, makes all the difference. You have, you have to look at details and, you know, if there is a team which of, of really people who are better than you in their departments, you know, cinematographer, an art director, you know, and an editor. So all of them are able to contribute and therefore you can concentrate on the actors and not on the tables. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Difficult to say which is your favorite, but if you push me, I would say the theme of Bombay. I think he's a very special uh, person, special um, composer. He's a very director-friendly music composer, in the sense that he would go whichever way you wanted to, you him to go, and uh, yet within that he'll find his own level. So it is, um, it's a very liberating experience working with him. He will care for what you want as much as he'll care for what he wants. And so it's always been very, it's always been like a first film with him. You know, we try to explore new things and uh, it's still experiment, you know, not just sit back and say, okay, he's the star, no, we don't have to worry. But it's not like that. Actors are what. I'm paid to work with, you know, and think, I think they bring the film alive and uh, I trust them and I, my job is to get the best out of them, you know, so I depend so much on them and I work as closely as possible with them and because I think at the end of the day, they are the ones who are going to make it real. Yeah, uh, I mean... How do you write women characters? You write women characters because you meet so many of them who are fascinating. You know, you're absolutely amazed at the strength that they have. And uh, I think they have something extra, so it fascinates you. Dubbing is always a bit messy, isn't it? It's always, I mean, the sink is not there, it looks false. All that the actor has done, it's somebody else's voice and it is, it's never 100% true. So it is an issue we can't do. The least you try to do is when we did from Roja when we came to Bombay, we made sure that we took care of the dubbing so that at least we got the real actor, the same actors to come and do it so that there was uh, honesty in it. Okay. So dubbing is always an issue. No, actually, I asked her to do my first film. She refused. <laughs> <laughs> so I married her. <laughs> I think it's narrow now. I think uh, filmmakers are 
the new generation of filmmakers are making fantastic films who are making much more realistic much more earthy. the audience have changed i think um, india's indian film industry is on the verge of a huge transition i think i think over the over the next 10 15 years we'll see real breakthrough i think i think what happened with uh, indian writing in english you know the i think that is likely to happen with indian filmmaking who's my favorite indian director gurudat gurudat i agree yeah <laughs> I think we have this issue in India that there is a sense about I think it's the British that has left it behind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about that. We left trains as well though. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> the censor rules haven't changed much after that and it's a battle. I think if you believed in it which is what happened in Bombay we did go through a battle. it used to be censored every week we had to go take it to bombay with a print and it would be seen again and again and again by i don't know how many number of people but it's a struggle it's a society we live in if they have the rules we have to see how to fight it and go for it you should just have that extra perseverance uh i think that's kurosawa <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's uh, nature is such a strong element to tell your story you know I mean um, the wind the rain it adds so much drama to narrate the mood in your setting and if it's used well it just accentuates your arc really really dramatically so uh, it's there you know and I've seen Kurosawa when I started The first film that really took me away was when I saw uh, Roshma, and um, that shook me up. I mean, I've never seen world cinema till then, and I think that has still not left me. So, please blame all the rain on Kurosawa. <laughs> <laughs> It's half the job done if you cast well. You know, uh, it's, it's, I, I disagree. I think it's ninety percent. Ninety percent, if you see, cast well. <laughs> yeah, just is so much easier if you cast well. And sometimes, sometimes you have to take the risk of casting against the grain. Mm. Somebody who's been doing a particular kind of thing, just shake them out of that and put them into something opposite to that, and it looks like suddenly they become great actors. So there's small tricks that you have to do, <laughs> but um, I think casting is very crucial. as thing some roles will require established well good performers you know even if the role is short but uh, some of them require new faces so that the character comes through more and not the personality so you it's a it's the part of writing is at that point of time you decide to an extent what kind of cast you're looking for and then they should have the time they should agree to your price they should agree <laughs> to your schedule <laughs> i think if you want to be an actor just have to go get into it I and mean, there's no fixed rules no fixed ways you don't know which door is going to open at what time so if you think you're ready if you think you can act better than all these guys <laughs> uh, you can you should think even if you can't you should think you can <laughs> then you should just go and do it <laughs>